Hey guys, this is Mike the Wrestling God Smith, and you're watching On Wrestling. Um, this video was actually my review of uh, AEW Dynamite because a lot of stuff happened. A lot of well, I got more questions and answers. And here's what I'm gonna say about this episode before I even talk into it. I think this episode ruled because we got a great ending sequence, and I'm gonna give it to Mariah May. She proved that she can ball with the rest of them. I didn't know what she was going to do because, like, they really didn't make her. Like, when she first showed up, and she was just being a stand for, like, Tony Storm. I had a gut feeling because they got um, my, you know, they got the, they got my girl from stardom, which I think they're going to have a fantastic rivalry because I feel like that's the next thing they should do. But that's my personal opinion. Like, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, this, this episode of, like, this episode of AEW, it's like, yo. We got heel MJF. We got face um Will Ospreay. And I love his promo because like bro, he was really bad. Like he was really bagging on MJF because I'm like bro, he really talked about the bidding war of 2024. He's like yo, that bidding war of 2024 didn't really go well for you. You thought you were gonna get your grasp on the other side. And I don't think like his thing. Tony Khan wants somebody to elevate it. I think Will could be that guy. Will should be that dude. Like, the fact that we got a fan, like, we got a fantastic match out of that, like, fantastic promo. Then we got a fan, we got a really fantastic match out of the Samoa Joe Chris Jericho thing. And I want to say I like the Chris Jericho learning tree bit because they're actually doing something with Big Bill and, and, and Brian Keith, the bounty hunter. I just, I just don't really see it because, like, you took out Joe for no reason, and you took out Hook, and you took out Shibata, and I'm like, you know, they're going to come back at Wembley. I feel like they're not going to make a promo segment probably till next week or so. I feel like that's kind of a waste of energy. I feel like Chris Jericho's kind of outlived his usefulness, and they need to cut him off because, like, I'm not saying, like, I don't want to see him on TV. It's just, it's just this, we it's like this weird quasi, like, I want to say quasi energy because like here's the thing, Chris Jericho is a generational talent. Just like Hang, like just like Hangman, just like Cody Rhodes, just like all these dudes who came that were AEW before and they're still AEW in some way or some shape or form. Even Ethan Page who was on NXT, like bro, like him doing a promo about him being the ego, ego, the the era of ego, which I'm like you know. It's kind of floundering, but I'm gonna talk about that in a different video. I'll probably make two video guys like I used to do. I will probably talk about that after this one. Here's here's my thing, okay? Like, I don't hate what AEW is doing. Because what it's proving to me is that they're still kind of going bar for bar with a V. And it's like, it's, like, it's not really a ratings war with them. Because, like, they got Monday Night Raw. They got NXT. They got SmackDown. But here's the thing. Like, we got a lot of good things out of this. Like, a lot of good heel turns. A lot of good face turns. Like... Like here's the thing, like if I was just a if I was a wrestler, I w I wouldn't worry about being a face or a heel because I'd rather just be a wrestler because the story's gonna be in my wrestling. That's where the story's gonna really be or the promo. Because here's the thing, we didn't need a promo, babe, with um the Chris Jericho thing. We didn't need a promo, babe. I'm glad they kind of got the mat. They kind of got Joe out the way for now to kind of see what they're gonna do for like the foreseeable future. But I think without Joe and without Hook and without Shibata, I feel like the learning tree is gonna kind of die because like it it's not really a vortex anymore. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a mini black hole that they're not really gonna do anything with Chris Jericho. They're not gonna go after the trios belts. I mean, pretty much like you know, um, they claimed it a rap video about the Young Bucks, which. I kind of figured they were going to do, like, last week. I kind of want to see what they're going to do with Daniel Garcia when he does come back. Because, like, if Daniel Garcia comes back, he's probably going to beat up MJF. And he's probably going to win the International Championship. Because I feel like he's the guy to get it. I feel like at that point, if he's going to be that guy, they should just elevate him. Because Undisputed Kingdom's not doing nothing. And I haven't seen Undisputed Kingdom in, like, months. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think Wardlow's ever going to be the guy. Because, like... It's super, like, the roster is, like, super stacked. Like, here's the thing. You got MJF, who came back. We're never going to get that confrontation until, like, probably the next World's End. And the thing is, Swerve is champion. So, at this point, even if they get rid of Swerve, and I'm just saying this off the top of my brain, if they get rid of Swerve, then, yeah, I kind of could see him being, like, losing the championship. 
but it's not going to be the Will. It'll probably be the MJF. It'll probably be to someone that he's never really faced before. Because, like, here's the thing. We never got a proper swear of MJF feud. Because, like, we kind of did. But it was kind of a it was kind of a mid feud anyway. And this is what I'm saying, too. Is like, yo, he's kind of like, Will Ospreay's going to beat MJF. It's going to happen. MJF might be the greatest, but Will's going to upstage him. He's going to outplay him. He's going to beat him. He's going to go. He's going to be a dickhead. He's going to really just kick the crap out of him. That's what's going to happen. I really feel like at this point, I'm just being 100% honest with you guys. Like, I was more excited about, like, the match between Danielson and Hangman. Because, like, Hangman is a deranged psychopath at this point. And I love that version of him right now because he's, he's just, he's not even trying to fight. Like the dude just want to fight, but he could have beat he could have beat Okada, and I really feel like Swerve going against Okada is really a waste of time. Even if they get the run, even if they get the match and it's a great match, Okada's not gonna take an L from Swerve. That's not gonna happen. Swerve might take an L because it's really because here's what's gonna end up happening. Okada pretty much wants to face Hangman because that interaction proves to me they're gonna have a match. He's only going with the Elite for Blood and Guts to get at Swerve. They're going to... Because Hangman and Swerve are going to beat the crap out of each other at Blood and Guts. Because I can't wait for that. I actually can't wait. I can't wait for Darby to get back in there. Because I'm glad Darby's back. And I'm glad that he's actually going to range and going after Brandon Cutler. Because that was the smartest thing in the world. Because I would have did that. I would have did that straight. I would have got a bat. I would have beamed his brains out. I would have did blood. I would have made a real mess. I would have sent the message like... That's what I would have did. Like that would have been fun, but I love that he's got the pink. He's got the M, you know the MGK pink pink on. I like that. Like what he's doing. I love Darby because Darby Darby. I just like him because he's unique. Because he he's just a different version of himself. And I like that Darby isn't. He does. He's not afraid to take bumps. He's not afraid to jump off. Like hurt himself. Like he will skate. Like the dude skate even with a broken foot. Like bro, he wrestled with a broken foot. I'm like bro. I'm like bro. You just dude. You you're just at a different level. But. I'll talk about him in another light. Because, like I said, it was a good episode. I feel like all the segments we got weren't really hit or misses. Even though Wrestle Talk is probably going to say they were. But I'm going to just tell you, like... Sorry, guys. I'm just going to tell you straight up. I feel like we got a lot of questions and a lot of answers. But I really want to see what Mariah May is going to say. Because the fact that she went in and she blinked and she came in going at Willow Nightingale. And Willow Nightingale tried everything against her and she couldn't get her. That means Mariah May is not trying to be the pretty face anymore. And she went, like, here's the thing. They're skipping and stuff and hugging. Like, bro, Luther was there in the, the white suit. Come on. Like, bro, she brained her. Like, she took that that, that Owen Hearts Women Championship and brained the crap out of her and made her bleed. Like, bro. And she took the shoe and still beat her. Like, this is crazy. Like, bro, she went ballistic. I'm actually happy about that. Because I want to see a heel Mariah May. I want to see what she can do, bro. I want to see a, a heel May and Mayu. I really do. I really want to see them do it, bro. I want to see them go after both to, like... She go after the AEW title, and then Mayu goes after that TNT or the TBS and the New Japan Strong. Like, bro, I really feel like that would work. I feel like they would be a dynamite faction. You get Luther, and then you get like they do like a thing, like a her and Tony Storm do like a segment for Luther, and he she, whoever wants to get Luther, like, bro, Luther's mad fun, but Luther, I felt bad. He actually got beat up enough to go through a table. I was like, why like why Luther, bro? Luther took a brunt of it. Like, why Luther? Luther just took it like it was nothing. And the thing is, she was more brutal than Hangman was. She made people bleed. Like he was bleeding in the match, but she made him bleed. She was wanting to fight. And Renee's trying to get a word from him. Like, bro, Renee was like, yo, Hangman, can I yo, can I get some respect for my thing that I'm trying to do? I thought he would've I thought he would have like I thought he would have um I thought he would have I thought he would have um did like the buckshot to her, said get up, get out of my face or something. No, he didn't even want to deal with her, bro. Like this hangman is this hang this level this version of hangman is a deranged psychopath. Like this is what I'm saying, guys. Like I'm not trying to take too long because I got to talk about NXT. Like bro, this AEW episode was fun. This ruled. Like I'm sorry, it ruled because we got a lot of questions. We still got Britt Baker and, and, and the CEO, because I think Britt Baker is really going to be Mercedes Moan. I feel like Mercedes Moan doesn't fit AEW, and that's because she's not, like, here's the thing. 
She's doing another heel WWE run in AEW. And it's not making no sense to me. Like, none. And I'm being perfectly honest with you guys. It rolled. Like, I don't really feel like she's doing anything. After since she's won that title, like, bro, you're not defending that title. I'm like, bro, if I meet you, I'm like, dude, you're not you're not hungry enough. Like, Mariah May's hungry. Like, literally, Chris Statlander's hungry. Like, bro, Chris Statlander is a heel. And the funny thing about Chris Statlander, she could actually win and be the most dominant champion because she was. And I'm like, bro, they should just let her be. Like, that's my feeling about this episode. Like, honestly, everything hit or miss. The Chris Jericho Learning Tree Society or Learning Tree or whatever they want to call themselves again. Because, dude, I don't think they need to be. I don't think they need to be a faction. Because those dudes are not. Like, here's the thing. Big Bill, I give a lot of credit to because that dude really needs the TV time. And he probably needs the pro- like he probably needs the boost. But honestly, he doesn't. It's like what Ricky starts. It's like, bro, Ricky could go to AEW. People would love him. He would be somebody over there. He would probably be in NXT like Ethan Page. Because they're not really doing nothing with Sean Spears. And I feel like they're not. But I'll talk about that in my NXT thing. And like I said, I I love... Like, I love what we're doing in AEW. I think this episode was a 9 out of 10. I think it was a 10 out of 10. Because, bro, we got something we never thought we would get. Like, they're making all all in actually make me fun. Because, bro, not only we got a championship match with Swerve and Brian Danielson, we got a freaking heel run on my Meyer Man. That means I'm actually going to get a lot more. I'm going to get a lot more adrenaline between these two weeks because going into the two weeks and going into the next month, it's going to be wild to me. Because to me, it's wild. But anyway, guys, I want to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.